So this video is going to be kind of a, um, a high level view of how to utilize the GitHub component in order to import a CSV to a test. Now the reason we would do this is to um, perhaps test the contents of response body against a known quantity. That is to say like a, uh, a set of data that we are already certain is correct. So that way every time our API sends back a response, for example an API that should be sending back a static response, uh, we compare it against this known quantity of data and verify that it's correct. Uh, the way we do that is by hosting our file on GitHub. Uh, API Fortress does not currently have a direct file upload system, but we do allow you to leverage files that are hosted on GitHub. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the data that we're, wor we're working with um, on GitHub. So let's go take a peek there. And so this is our CSV file. It's hosted on GitHub. GitHub, <laughs> GitHub. Uh, GitHub, as mentioned, uh, we have four columns worth of data. Uh, we have IDs, we have names, we have quantities, and we have prices. So very simple stuff. Um, as I'm sure you've seen before in previous demo videos, uh, we often utilize a um, uh, product retail or kind of a retail product simulation MP API, um, and this actually matches the data therein. Uh, we're not going to go too deep on the matching data to data thing, but um, at least this way you can see what we're working with. So if we jump over to APIF uh, and we go into Compose, we're going to again create a test from scratch. And we're going to keep it nice and simple. So rather than going to the HTTP client, we're going to go straight to request assertions. And we're going to add the GitHub component. Um, so we're going to put in our account information. So in this case, this is my personal account. Please don't abuse that. <laughs> um, the repository we're using is CSV test. Uh, branch is master. Don't worry about that stuff. Uh, this token that I'm putting in here, this is an API token that you actually generate in uh, GitHub's, um, GitHub's UI. Uh, the documentation for our GitHub component gives explicit instructions on how to access that. The variable, as always, is the variable that we're going to be storing this data in. So let's call it um, CSV payload. Uh, the path is the actual, uh, the end path in GitHub of the file that you're using. So in this case, it's test3.csv. And the mode is CSV. So all these modes that you see here are things that we're able to actually pull in from GitHub and parse. Uh, in this case, we're using a CSV. So let's go ahead and click the check button. OK, so that's our GitHub component. Now. Uh, I guess the most pertinent thing to do from here is to insert a comment component um, and actually log out the contents of this payload. So let's take a look at what that is. So we name the, uh, the variable that we're storing it in CSV payload. So CSV payload. Great. And now if we just run this test all by itself, we should be able to see the contents of the... Yeah, great. Okay, here. So now this is actually a great time to mention how we bring in data from GitHub. So in the case of a CSV, we're actually looking at... Um, a multi-dimensional array, a nested array. And if you haven't yet, and you're not familiar with traversing arrays in general, I would strongly recommend taking a look at the video on that. Uh, the link is in the comments for this video, so you can kind of get a better idea of how we actually navigate all of that. So without going into too much detail um, with regards to actually building a test, let's just take a quick look at how we can access um, individual pieces of data inside of our CSV. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna utilize comments here. It should be mentioned that um, these arrays are iterable. So we can use the each loop, we can use the while loop to iterate over them. But I just want to give you guys a quick look at how to access individual pieces of information. So we know that this whole thing is a nested array. So if we go CSV payload and then we reference zero, this will give us the first uh, array inside of the nested array. And let's run this just to make sure that that's true. I'll hit run test. Great, so here we see the entirety of the uh, the data structure that comes back off the CSV, and here we can actually see the, the zeroth index. So that's that first row out of our CSV. And if we actually jump back to our CSV, we'll see, yes, one baseball cap, five, 29.99. And over here, one baseball cap, five, 29.99. This is the wrong test report, this one here. Um, so that's how we access the first item in the nested array. We can actually take that logic a step further and add another comment component. And if we go CSV payload, zero, and let's do one. So we're going to be accessing the oneth index and the zeroth index of the whole nested array. And this is very jargony, and for that I apologize, but hopefully the test report will make it a little clearer. So we hit run test. So we see our call to GitHub. We see our whole nested data structure. 
we see the first row of our CSV, and here we actually see the second column of the first row. So 0, 1 gives us baseball cap. And just to verify, we can go back to our CSV and see, yes, if we go to the 0 and then the 1, remember that arrays are 0 indexed, we'll see baseball cap here. So we are seeing what we need to see. So that's accessing CSVs in a nutshell from API Fortress. Um, of course, you can use this in a number of ways. So we can compare, again, individual pieces of data from a CSV against assertions from a, uh, an API test. Um, and that's really the most useful way uh, to utilize this data. So hopefully this was helpful and it gives you a better idea on how to use uh, CSVs with your API test via GitHub.